So thank you so much for joining us and so many of you. It's wonderful to see uh, almost 40 participants already online. Uh, in terms of housekeeping rules, kindly keep your microphone on mute unless you're speaking. If you want to jump in and we will want you to jump in, please raise your hand uh, and uh, Gerda will be moderating and we will give you the floor. If you have any burning question or any technical issues, please don't hesitate to write it in the uh, chat box underneath here. And also we would love to hear uh, who you are, where you're coming from. So please enter all the details in the chat. The meeting is going to be recorded and we'll be able to, uh, to share the recording after, after this. Thank you again uh, for joining us. We look forward to hearing from you. And without further ado, I'm gonna uh, hand it over to our moderator, Gerda. Thank you. Thank you very much, Maria. Maria Schiavo is, Schiavo is um, working with our country uh, action team and she is there for communication and she is, um, she joined the team uh, this year. So that's Maria. Um, and my name is Gerda Verberg, but I think we all know each other and I'm extremely uh, happy to see so many faces and uh, names and I'm very happy that you were able to join this uh, webinar. Why? Because we want to um, hear from you how the situation is in your country, how the food and nutrition crisis is impacting your country, whether nutrition is in the emergency pack, how the government and all other organization stakeholders are, re are responding to the current crisis, but also what kind of solutions um, are there coming forward in your uh, country for the short term and for the longer term? And where can we as countries learn from each other where can we as Sun uh, Movement, different stakeholders, what, what can we learn from each other? And also where can the Sun Movement global support system or uh, um, executive committee or lead group or who else, where can we help you? Um, where are the gaps? So please speak up and speak out. We know each other. Um, I know that you have prepared something, but try to speak as much as possible from the heart. And I will have questions. I am quite sure that I am will have questions, but also don't hesitate to use the chat box uh, or raise your hands. There is a little icon um, uh, down in your screen that you, where you can raise your, uh, your hand and then after we have heard from most of the countries, because we first will make a tour de table, uh, when we have heard from uh, most of the countries uh, that are um, available and participating uh, here in Asia, then we will open uh, the uh, box for questions and answers. We have two hours, so we will make best use uh, of this. And we want to make use of your messages and your experiences and your uh, suggestions for a way forward. We will use them, of course, in the executive committee, of course, in the lead group, but also wherever uh, we go, in uh, with the donors, in with the World Bank, with the uh, regional development uh, banks and wherever. So once more, good afternoon, good evening, um, we are looking forward to hear from you. We um, will start per uh, country with the Sun Movement focal point or country coordinator, but I would like to also uh, hear from the civil society, the UN organizations, um, the private sector, the business uh, representatives uh, or the donor representatives. So don't hesitate. Um, I start to invite uh, the, uh, the, the Sun Movement focal point, but um, don't hesitate to raise your hand if you want to add something, if you want to ask something. Let me look around because this is quite something. Is this clear to all of you? 
Uh, very good. Let me then ask uh, people um, if you have a camera and your connection is okay, please open your camera and keep your microphone on mute until I invite you to uh, speak up. And I start to invite to uh, speak up first Bangladesh and then I come to the Philippines. So let me give it a try and be ready to get the floor because um, we don't have a totally prepared list. And if there is a totally prepared list, I'd like to switch a little bit and uh, be a little bit flexible in who we uh, uh, ask. Um, but Stephen is telling me that Nurul from Indonesia needs to leave in 15 minutes. So if you don't mind, uh, uh, Mrs. Kazi uh, Begum, Sebumessa Begum, then I would like to first give the floor to Indonesia. Gunul, please come in, put on your camera, unmute your microphone and tell us how the situation is in Indonesia and where you see potential solutions. Dear Gerda, uh, I'm so sorry, but I have um, unstable connection, so I'll, I'll try in five minutes. Apologies. Yeah. Okay, you will, you will come back in five minutes, Nurul. Right, in that case, and um, the colleagues, you see it's improvising all the time. Um, Mrs. Kazi Zebumessa Begum from Bangladesh, can I ask you to come in? I hope you are here. And if you're not here, I will ask Dr. Bulbul to take the floor. Please open your camera, unmute your microphone. If that is not the case, then we will continue to improvise and then we will go to somebody I have already seen, and that's from the Philippines, um, our, for our Sun Movement Focal Point, but also, ah, there you are. Good afternoon, you have, you have the floor. Good morning. How are you, Gerda? Uh, I am well, uh, and we are all eager, all 55 participants are eager to hear from you, uh, um, Madam Focal Point, how Bangladesh, how the situation is in Bangladesh following the food price and fuel crisis, and uh, whether nutrition is well embedded in the emergency, but also what your country is looking for uh, when it comes to solutions. Over to you. Uh, thank you, Verda. Uh, it's really uh, like a sudden attack because I am just returning. <laughs> so, uh, yes, uh, actually I was uh, holding another meeting, so I am a little late. Uh, thank you. Actually, you know, at uh, this moment, the whole world is experiencing uh, various uh, sort of crises. And all sorts of crises has a direct, uh, you know, uh, impact on food and nutrition and people's uh, health and well-being. So Bangladesh is also uh, in that process, and we are experience experiencing so many uh, problems, uh, uh, especially after COVID, uh, my, uh, and uh, we have a flood at this moment in our country. So these natural things also are, you know, having here. So we have to face all these things. And also, you know, Ukraine things also is an international huge crisis, international crisis. So uh, the, I would like to say that the advent of the COVID-19 pandemic and its rapid spread 
has disrupted the life and livelihood of the population, but more damaging effects is pronounced to poor and the most vulnerable. Especially, I would like to say that women and children are the most vulnerable group uh, for all sorts of uh, disruption and uh, uh, disadvantages. Like in many countries, the COVID-19 crisis has deeply impacted all known underlying uh, proximate drivers of malnutrition in Bangladesh. Now it is beyond doubt, unless proper mitigation measures uh, are not taken on time, that COVID might create more negative impact in our nutrition status of the under five children and women in the reproductive age group. So however, still we are in a vulnerable situation as global scenario also hampering same. Uh, moreover, Ukraine uh, war also creates additional challenges globally. This will result in increased hunger and malnutrition and consequently will reverse the gains made, it, made till date in the country. So, you know, uh, also with uh, this um, Employment opportunities are also curtailed um, and um, uh, with increasing prices of food products due to disruption in production and supply and panic buying. There has been a significant reduction in the expenditure on food by the poor and vulnerable. To add fuel to the fire, the, uh, you know, access to various services related to food, health, nutrition, wash, education, school feeding programs, social safety net programs, et cetera, which were aimed to poor have further deteriorated the situation. So uh, I, I think this is the situation. Um, uh, this is the situation we are facing. So maybe I can speak a little more after a few uh, minutes or a couple of minutes after hearing uh, all other people, maybe we can speak later. Thank you. Thank you very much. I have one question right now because thank you for um, just jumping in, uh, walking in and already speaking up and speaking out. That is okay. I would like to hear from you later on. Um, is, is nutrition well well positioned in the um, emergency um, support for people? So is it in the emergency uh, packages? And what are potential solutions? Do you see farmers uh, ready for alternative uh, crops production? Is your government speeding up uh, a food system? Um, are you strengthening safety nets? Is there support from any? So a little bit looking forward, um, uh, Kazi, um, uh, in the next uh, turn to speak up. So, so that other countries can also learn from Bangladesh, how you are responding, but also longer term, how do you want um, uh, uh, other partners, global players, uh, for instance, how do you want to them to support you? And what are your messages for uh, the global level? The UN General Assembly, the World Bank meeting. So this is also the moment, not only for you, Kazi, but also for other country representatives to speak up. We want to hear from you. But we're coming okay. back to you. Um, and yeah, first we brother, I will come back. I will come back later, please. Continue. Very good, very good, very good. We will hear from you. Thank you very much. Um, then we go to Dr. Asusena to hear from the Philippines. Dr. Asusena, you have the floor. Good morning, everyone. And actually, Greta, I'd like to share that there is really a threat for the country's malnutrition and other problems. So, for the increase due to the impact of the Dr. Asusena, Dr. Asusena, you need to come a little bit closer to your right. A lot of noise. Yeah. Good, I can hear me. Yeah, a little bit better. A little bit better. Hello. 
I come back to you because we want to hear from you. Are there other microphones in your room? That are, okay. not, are there other microphones that are not on mute? Yes, just okay. I will come back to you otherwise, and then you can test a little bit more the micro. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Asusena. Then let me go to Dr. Kiran Rupakate, um, Rupakate from um, um, Nepal. Dr. Kiran, we hope to hear from you. And then we go back to Nurul uh, from Bapanas. Um, and then we come back to Asusena. Uh, bear with us, all technical uh, um, problems will be sorted out. But Dr. Kiran, please. Uh, uh, thank you very much. And it's a very good afternoon here. Um, thank you very much for organizing uh, such um, an important, uh, you know, um, dialogue today. Actually, it's a very good initiative, um, at least for Nepal, because uh, we have just brought you know new fiscal year budget, and uh, we are heavily suffered because of the COVID, and uh, the economy has badly been hit because of the COVID pandemic. In that context, we have brought budget. Uh, so I have a limited time. I understand that, and to save my bandwidth, let me you know stop my video. Please allow me for that, and. I will just highlight in this round of you know, question and answer, I will highlight uh, what is the situation in Nepal. Perhaps if time allows, then in, in the next segment, next round, I will be highlighting more how government is trying to you know, address the problem. Um, although- uh, Kiran, Dr. Kiran, my suggestion to you will be to share as much as possible in this first round, also potential solutions, otherwise, um, we cannot organize the uh, interaction. So uh, tell us the, the challenges, but also come forward with potential solutions. Okay, thank you, Gerda. Please stop me if I have you know, crossed the limit in terms of timing then. I have uh, things to share with this you know, August gathering, but I, I'm, I'm afraid whether I can manage because of the time constraint. So as you know that you know, um, there is no direct trade between Nepal, uh, Russia, and EU. Ukraine uh, in a large extent, actually it's just a 2% of total import, um, but an increase in global commodity price is leading to rise in the cost of importing fuel, uh, metal product, agriculture and uh, agricultural products and minerals. Since mid 2021, the cost of food and energy related item have increased rapidly in Nepal. In particular, the price of edible oils with inflation in edible oil reaching over 20% by 2021. So situation is a little bit, you know, getting uh, you know, difficult for us. Um, not only that, transportation costs have also increased significantly due to the increase in the price of petrol and diesel, which have risen by 43.2% and 57.4% respectively between January and June 2022 in petrol and diesel. So when there is a you know, price hike in petrol and diesel, definitely that, that effect actually in the transportation of food and that ultimately lead to the you know, price hike of the uh, food, food product. And not only that, you know, we have to uh, heavily emphasize in agriculture, but, but at the same time, we have shortage of fertilizer um, that also likely to impact prices in the coming months with fertilizer price increasing by 20% between January uh, and March 2022, three times the cost compared to March 2021. Um, and plantation of paddy, Nepal's main staple crop is ongoing. And currently, the production might be impacted negatively due to the surges and high price of fertilizer. Uh, in addition to that, due to supply constraint, Nepal's consumer price inflation rose to 7.28% in mid-April 2022, up to up from 3.10, which is the last year of this time. And the inflation expectation survey projected further increase in price level for the remainder 
of 2022, which puts the poor population at further risk of food insecurity and malnutrition. So you can assume, actually, we are having a, a hard time. And the current war situation um, likely to increase the number of malnourished children under the age of five years and pregnant and lactating women and girls who have already suffered from reduced diet and health system support due to COVID-19. So this is uh, the situation at the moment. And uh, economically, it's not a big economy. Uh, because of the COVID, it was already badly hit. And uh, because of you know, this war, actually, the, the fuel is going to be a very scarce commodities. And uh, the depletion of you know, foreign account in terms of the dollar account and all the foreign currencies has also put a lot of pressure on us uh, to import more fuel. Uh, the fuel is lifeline in a way that you have to, you know, uh, carry a food product from one region to another region since Nepal is a hilly region, you know, you have mountainous areas. Uh, so from that perspective, uh, we have a hard time. But considering this fact, actually, um, the, the Honorable Minister of Finance has recently, you know, presented the budget in the parliament. And in that, actually, um, the government has highly focused on agriculture sector. Uh, and that's why the coming fiscal year will be the national campaign year of agriculture production for self-reliance. Um, and under this, there are different program has been you know, proposed. For example, agriculture production program for self-reliance will be implemented to increase domestic production. Agriculture sector will be commercialized, mechanized and modernized in order to increase the productivity of this sector. And uh, since agriculture is lifeline in a way at the moment, uh, and we have to increase the production and productivity. So seeds, fertilizer, technology, and irrigation facilities have also given emphasis um, uh, to ensure their regular supply. And uh, to the farmers, there are certain provisions have been made, for example, concession and loan, agriculture insurance, agriculture ambulance, and uh, contributory farmer pension scheme, which is very much new. Actually, it's, it's a great step to encourage farmer uh, to put the you know, attention in the agriculture business. And seed aspirants campaign for food security, agriculture se sector development program, especially for the indigenous crop and organic farming, livestock insurance. So there are many programs actually we have tried to you know, uh, devise this year um, amid all these difficult situations. And next year budget, uh, to be specific, prioritized to expand school meal program, uh, program to grade six, it was uh, up to grade five till last year. And from next year, we'll be having a school meal program to grade six. That is a great vehicle um, to ensure, you know, um, uh, I mean, uh, the nutritious, nutrition uh, status of the children at the school. And it also focused for promoting production and utilization of local food and storage facilities, warehouse construction, strengthening food management and trading company is emphasized to increase buffer stock of food because um, you know landslide and flooding is also a problem like in Bangladesh and Nepal. So uh, buffer stock maintenance is another area that has been highly emphasized by the budget. And the preparation is also ongoing to organize fourth national food system dialogue to implement pathways and commitment expressed during the UN food system summit dialogue to 2021. Further, government of Nepal has circulated budget guideline to line ministries to include food system dialogue outcome in the next fiscal year plan. And not only that, Nepal has a strong multi-sector platform at federal, province, and local level. This pl platform were instrumental in providing information planning and response and implementation during the COVID-19 pandemic. This lesson will also be utilized in, in, in the next fiscal year joint planning through the MSNP third, ensuring integration of nutrition activities in all program of sector will also be you know, ca carried out in a way. So um, after saying this, um, I, I would have certain, you know, um, you know uh, I mean, government of Nepal uh, trying to address this problem through different, you know, uh, measures, for example, and, uh, and uh, as a you know, focal agency of um, nutrition and multi-sector platform, so planning commission will be put its effort to have active food price monitoring and regulating mechanism, coordination and activation for a stringent monitoring of food price, coordinate relevant ministry and department. And uh, evidence generation is key to target response during the crisis. So uh, with the help of other development partner, 
efforts are going on to have an assessment of impact of the global crisis on the agriculture and food security situation, periodic monitoring of market and food security situations. And uh, as you know, Gerda, we have a right to food and food sovereignty act. Actually, we need to implement them um, in a true later in spirit. So our effort will also be on that. And uh, special attention will be given to the nutritional need of the vulnerable, pregnant, and lactated women or girls uh, and children is six to 59 months in the next year's annual budget and plan starting July 2022. So these are some of the areas where uh, we have to address, but uh, because of the, you know, this uh, uh, pandemic and war, actually uh, there is likely, you know, bad uh, uh, impact or effect on the Nepalese economy and agriculture sector and nutrition. But at the same time, in the budget which have been just presented to the parliament and the process of endorsement has, uh, you know, uh, provisioned many measures to, to address those problems. I will stop here and I will add more in, in future. Thank you, Gerda. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kiran, focal point uh, uh, for the Sun Movement in Nepal, but also a member of our executive uh, committee. Um, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I can I hear that there are many, many challenges, just like, like in every country, but your government is very much um, motivated and active in becoming self-reliant and is heavily investing in agriculture. Yeah. Is nutrition well enough included, uh, Dr. Kiran, in, uh, agriculture, uh, in agriculture production? And is in the whole, um, in the whole uh, focus of the government and other players, is nutrition well uh, enough positioned? Question mark. Oh, thank you. Um, may I respond now? Gerda? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please respond now, uh, very briefly, and then we okay. go to uh, Indonesia. Yes. Um, during my, you know, uh, presentation before, also I had mentioned that. Um, yes. Uh, while we talk about agriculture, definitely uh, nutrition agenda is uh, very much, you know, aligned with that. And since Ministry of Agriculture uh, and Livestock Development is one of the major player in the implementation of the MSNP two, uh, which is going on at the moment, and also the active member of the steering committee, high level steering committee here, we always, you know, uh, encourage and uh, you know uh, motivate them to align their activities with the nutrition, you know, uh, agenda at the same time, but. I mean, um, but at the same time, um, as a multi-stakeholder -stakeholder platform uh, over here in the Planning Commission, we always, you know, knock and uh, ensure, uh, you know, the, the follow-up um, in terms of aligning nutrition agenda with the agriculture, um, agriculture business, agriculture activities and interventions. So okay. thank you for implementing this and we'll, we'll further, you know, motivate it to, you know, further ensure the alignment of nutrition with agriculture. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, Dr. Kiran. We go to uh, Nurul, um, Madam Nurul from uh, uh, Bapanas, um, because she has to leave. But uh, this is the uh, information um, we hope to hear. What is the answer? Where do you see short terms or your country see looks for short term, but also longer term uh, solutions? Um, and is the focus well enough? Is nutrition well included? Uh, so, Dr. Kiran, we also would like to have see the concrete proposals for uh, investment in your own food system, not only agriculture, but also, of course, uh, nutrition. We would like to uh, you to share the information so that other countries, um, if uh, they want, can learn from it. Um, Madam Nurul, can we come back to Indonesia to hear from you? And then we hope to hear from Vietnam. Nurul, are you there? Nurul, can you please unmute yourself, Indonesia? Apparently, that is not the case, but I really, ah, yes, there we are. Yeah, and colleagues, we are expecting unstable connection, but what we can, ah, no rule. Um, thank you very much. Um, dear colleagues, Nurul has a bad connection, but she is 
um, uh, encouraging us. She is writing in the chat box the um, the the situation in Indonesia. So please read um, the chat box. And if some of you want to share something extra and you don't want to take the floor, please feel free because this meeting is recorded and the colleagues from um, um, the, um, the Sun Movement Secretariat and the networks are also taking notes. Let me then go to um, the representative of uh, Vietnam. Uh, Dr. Li Dan Tu Yen, um, please introduce yourself. What is your background? And take the floor. Uh, good afternoon, Gerda. Can you hear me? This is Phu Loud Nguyen. Um, yeah. Um, uh, uh, on, on behalf of Dr. Le Zhang Tuyen, this is not available today. I'm the technical uh, focal point for the Sun Vietnam, and I will uh, uh, take the presentation uh, about the sharing the uh, stories of Vietnam uh, facing the crisis. So, as mentioned, like uh, the uh, um, uh, focal point of Nepal uh, in the region, we're facing the same situation. Uh, the crisis has affected the cost of living thus expecting uh, food and nutrition security of the nation. Uh, even though nutrition currently has been integrated in the three new national target programs period 2025 and 2021-2025 uh, uh, and got funded, but the actual money allocated by the central government got delayed in the last two years because of uh, the COVID-19 and now the crisis, the global crisis. Uh, so is this because nutrition is not yet considered an emergency compared to other needs? Uh, and national uh, budget has been cut for every sector. And the first sector affected is surprisingly health and nutrition. Um, so um, um, since uh, 2019, there has been no national target program for health. And now in the new period, only three new uh, three national target programs, which is uh, new rural development, uh, poverty reduction, and one uh, special program for the minority, uh, ethnic minorities. But luckily, with the advocates uh, from health sector and our developing partner, we are able to integrate nutrition intervention in all three uh, uh, national target program. But now it's not managed by the Ministry of Health anymore. It's managed by uh, Ministry of, uh, War, uh, of, um, of um, Social Welfare and Ministry of Agriculture. So it's a bit, a bit difficult for, for health sector to manage resource because we have to ask from other uh, ministry to, to give health a chance to, 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 to do nutrition. Um, and uh, as you know, Vietnam has just approved the national nutrition strategy uh, with us also with the support, uh, technical support from Sun. And it had a specific objective addressing nutrition in emergency, first time ever after, uh, this is a um, version 3.0 of the NNS, that the first time we had a nutrition emergency uh, objective, specifically uh, targeting nutrition in emergency and um, the two um, indicators related to nutrition emergency that every province which is the sub-national level they have to make a plan for nutrition in emergency and to secure funding for nutrition emergency so this is uh, the opportunity for us from the policy and, and financing size. And nutrition stakeholders across central level and to sub-national level are committed and work together in planning and operation to address the issues. So um, the challenge uh, that we encounter is the national budget cut, as I mentioned, and also less international funding for nutrition. And the second one, but it's very um, uh, 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 serious right now, is a disturbance of the health system after COVID-19 because uh, of the COVID-19 is like a test 
for the whole cell cell system. So something is like a tumor has been cut and is a painful cut uh, related to the health regulation and especially health personnel, especially people at the uh, grassroots level uh, for the preventive health. Uh, they are um, it, uh, it's estimated that around like 10,000 uh, health worker quit their job after the 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 uh, after the covid-19 so now it's very difficult for the for the government to maintain the uh, routine activity after covid-19 um so uh, the respective uh, solution uh, with that we uh, think uh, to go forward is the advocacy from developing partner to secure funding for nutrition from budget cut because if they cut the whole thing they cut the nutrition first. Uh, so it, um, the solution is also including the inclusion of essential nutrition service in health insurance scheme. Uh, um, that um, finding an innovation for funding mechanism towards the universal health uh, coverage, uh, which is now UNICEF is supporting us to include uh, some treatment into health insurance. But we are fighting now with the uh, parliament uh, in the next round. Um, the second solution, we propose that a new policy to sustain and reinforce the health workforce at in the frontier level, like back to pay, being protected from the, uh, the, the, the surrounding environment. It's very painful for, for many health workers and especially mental health for health workers. Uh, and uh, what we propose to get the support from uh, global is a stronger advocacy to call on the global and regional commitment on nutrition because we already have it. But how to strengthen this with the more commitment from the central government? And the second one is to provide a TA uh, technical uh, uh, assistance on proposed topic that we already uh, gave up, uh, give in uh, the joint annual, uh, annual assessment 2000. And 21. At this moment, Vietnam has been approached by the Nutrition International to see if some of the TA proposal is uh, uh, is be, uh, being funded and and supported by the Nutrition International. That all from Vietnam. Thank you for your listening. Thank you very much because this is a lot of information in a very short time. Uh, thank you very much and. All the best over there. I have one question for you right now. Um, one of the target uh, programs is rural development and I think agriculture, and of course also poverty reduction and investing in minorities. But on when it comes to investment in agriculture and uh, rural development, is nutrition uh, well enough in the program? Is it following? the food systems uh, uh, pathway. Do you know? Uh, yes. Uh, after the food submit in the uh, in last year, um, they opened a lot of food system dialogue here in Vietnam for the first time and had a commitment from the head of the state. And also now we are planning for the uh, action plan for the sustainable food system and nutrition is one uh, one important part of uh, our four call uh, pillar in the food system. So we, we link uh, agriculture and nu nutrition well enough. I think so. very good. And are you as Sun Movement in Vietnam involved in the full development of the food systems in the rolling out in the implementation? Yes, very much because uh, uh, the, the director of the National Institute of Nutrition is a convener of uh, the uh, food system dialogue in Vietnam. Excellent. Thank you so much. Don't hesitate to come back, ask for the floor or ask a question, because this is um, what we would like to see. And it's great to hear that Nutrition International is now discussing with you whether they can provide the uh, technical uh, uh, assistance that you need. Let me then go to Cambodia. And after Cambodia, I would like to go to Timor-Leste. Um, so that you can already uh, prepare. Cambodia, Dr. Soxilo, are you there? And can we hear from you and your people? 
And until Dr. Sokshi Lo is engaging, we would also like to hear from Sun Movement stakeholders, so civil society, the UN uh, representatives, uh, business network representatives, um, and or donors. Dr. Sokshi Lo, are you there? Apparently that is not the case. Then we go to Dr. Philippe de Costa from uh, Timor-Leste, and then we hope to go to Papua New Guinea. Dr. Philippe de Costa, are you there? Hello, good afternoon. Uh, I am Philippe da Costa from Timor-Leste. I will switch off the video since the network is not good and I will keep talking about Timor-Leste. Uh, so in Timor-Leste, as you know, we are affected by three types of crisis. The first one was our internal uh, political situation where budget, uh, uh, the state budget didn't pass. Uh, the second crisis was the pandemia, the COVID-19 attacked our country. The fourth one was the cyclone that hit our country two years consecutively. Uh, the fourth was the, this current global crisis uh, that affected, uh, caused by war in Ukraine and Russia. So as you know, before the crisis, this crisis that I was mentioned, Timor-Leste situation, on malnutrition and food insecurity was already worse. We are the second highest of the food insecurity and also for all types of malnutrition, we are above the threshold line of WHO. Uh, in order to tackle that situation, our government recently, uh, we triple our budget allocation for the uh, interventions around the uh, interventions uh, relevant to food security and also uh, nutrition. Uh, I can mention few like we are uh, rolling out uh, uh, social security scheme for uh, mother and child. We call it Bolsa Damai, which is a pocket for mothers, where we are subsidizing pregnant women, lactating women, and children under five. Uh, we are also uh, double the budget for school meal programs. Uh, and we are also increasing um, um, budget for uh, um, agriculture uh, production. So our uh, budget allocation for, for the intervention relevant to food security in, and nutrition uh, is increased from 47 million to 116 million uh, uh, this year, and we are, uh, the government is planning to increase uh, more further in the next year. Uh, all the intervention that we are conducting, we are um, actually reprioritizing every, uh, all the priority that we have. We put together a document called Consolidated National Action Plan, uh, which is, uh, we have fewer uh, intervention and we are hoping to increase, scale up our investment in these fewer interventions that we have identified. To identify these fewer intervention, we have a range of consultation from national, subnational, across the sector with the development partners, with the UN agencies, uh, and also government se sector at all level. And everybody agreed with the fewer priorities and we are now focusing on investment, investing in it. And we are also focusing on uh, coordinating. Uh, so we have national, we, the government have a, its national interministerial coordination body called CONSANTIL. And also recently, last week, we have set up a donor and uh, we have set up a development partners coordination platform which composed of UN and development partners. And next week, we are also going to set up uh, the civil society coordination uh, platform. This coordination platform will then support the government uh, in, in first uh, to advocate for higher allocation for the uh, intervention I just mentioned. The second is coordinate additional support for the gaps that government may not cover. 
and and third is to oversight to monitor the implementation of uh, those uh, the budget uh, that are currently implementing this year and also for the next year um we are also uh, um participate actively in a sustainable food system. Uh, so we have an action plan in place and uh, this action plan uh, is being uh, uh, passed to our mini uh, Minister of Finance, which will then uh, pass on to the line minister for budget allocations. So al uh, although we are, we are having a, quite a significant level of problems, but we are also trying our best to scale up our effort and to scale up our investment. We are hoping that the United Nations and development partners will continue to provide us with good technical assistance, provide us with good uh, tracking system so that we can continue monitor our progress and we can all together, UN and us and civil society, we can advocate for more allocation for the next year. So this is what I would like to update uh, this afternoon. Thank you very much, everybody, for listening to us. Thank you very much, uh, um, Dr. Philippe da Costa. This is very informative and spot on and to the point. And I'm quite sure that there will be representatives from countries or stakeholders who will have questions. And otherwise, after every country has spoken, I will have uh, questions, but if you want to ask something, um, if you need specific support or whatever, don't hesitate. And this doesn't only count for, um, for Timor-Leste, but for all countries, etc. Let us know and let inform each other where you can, um, um, where you would like to see support or what you want to learn or get from other countries or from Sun Mover Movement stakeholders. So now we go to Papua New Guinea and we hope to hear from Mr. Wilson Karoke, um, who is the focal point. And then we hope to hear from Pakistan, Dr. Uh, Nazir Ahmed. But first, Papua New Guinea. Wilson, are you there? Wilson, can you unmute your microphone? Apparently that it is not the case. Um, okay. Um, then uh, let me go to um, uh, Pakistan, Dr. Nazir Ahmed. Dr. Nazir, are you there? And are you able to speak? Dr. Nazir. It is not the case. Please unmute yourself. Then I go to Dr. Soxilo. Let me see whether Soxilo is here. Dr. Soxilo, is there anyone from Cambodia? Is there anyone from Pakistan? If this is not the case, let me call on LAO PDR, Dr. Foni Savana uh, Keonako Ne. Are you there or uh, Mr. Michael Vongsai Vongwai? La OPDR. Are you there? Don't forget to unmute your micro. Don't forget. If it's not the case, let us move on. Um, because we want to hear from others as well. Let us um, go to Yemen then. Dr. Nazar Bazu Hype or uh, Dr. Karima, are you there? Yemen. Can you please speak up? Uh, 
Yemen. If this is not the case, then I would like to go to Kyrgyzstan. Kyrgyzstan, Dr. Mukashev Azamat, the Deputy Minister of Agriculture, Water Industry and Regional Development. Can I ask you to take the floor? Geta, this is uh, Bermet uh, Sadegaliva, UNICEF uh, Health Nutrition Officer. Uh, unfortunately, uh, our uh, Deputy Minister, he doesn't speak English first, and secondly, uh, he will be not providing, how to say, he is, he is not on, uh, on the position to provide information. We can share in written later on. Okay, we will share in written later on. That's what you say, Bernet. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Is there anything you would like to share right now? But we are already yeah. extremely happy with uh, getting information afterwards. But if you want to share something with us right now, um, you're more yes, than welcome. Colleagues. Colleagues, can you hear me? This is Elmira Shishkaraeva from the World Food Program. Together with UNICEF, we are supporting uh, the Sun Movement here in Kyrgyzstan. And actually, we did, uh, you know, there are several like uh, recent assessments were done in the country, evaluating the current situation related to food security and nutrition. And especially, it's not related only to post-COVID situation, but also with the uh, current conflict uh, 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 between Ukraine and Russia and the sanctions because Kyrgyzstan is affected by those sanctions and we are highly, our economy is highly dependent. So actually what we are going to share, this is the recent uh, study on impact on the Kyrgyz Republic. And uh, we are like, you know, for example, the few highlights that's, uh, uh, that's resilient of the most vulnerable households, of course, like were impacted uh, of the, uh, the, uh, the rise in food prices up to 17% and inflate, inflation. So this all affects the ability of the poorest households um, that they already spent more than half of the budget on food. And uh, uh, that the situation is actually worsened. Uh, that uh, the country is also highly dependent on remittances. And so we predict that there will be a drop in 33%. And those are family that uh, dependent from remittances are the most poor. The poverty remains up to 35, 38% in this year, which is estimated by the World Bank. So uh, then the food availability, this, as I said, we are highly dependent from Russia on wheat, vegetable oil, and sugar. And this is uh, like, uh, this has a direct impact on the price. The fertilizers prices are also, uh, we expect it to be, like, it's already increased, but dramatically. And also supply chain disruptions. So uh, basically uh, in terms of government response, yes, government has uh, established the anti-crisis committee for rapid response to social and economic challenges. And uh, the government adopted the anti-crisis plan, which is supported by, one and a half uh, billion USD. And there is uh, like various activities support to agriculture producers, uh, then exemption of the wheat grain and flour import. Uh, then uh, there is a national pub uh, paid public works program is to be launched. Uh, there are uh, social benefits for poor families with children will increase. Uh, uh, then there are like a few other initiatives which government trying to respond. Uh, but as I said, like, we also share the, uh, the report itself. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Madam uh, Elmira Shiglara uh, Eva, um, for sharing very spontaneous. And we are really looking forward to receiving uh, the report um, uh, from uh, Kyrgyzstan, not only on the current situation, but also where Kyrgyzstan is looking for longer term solutions, uh, for instance, through a um, reformed, renewed uh, food system that is uh, nutritious and producing healthy and nutritious food, um, but also produced in a way that is um, uh, sustainable 
and uh, that is able to provide jobs to uh, young people and uh, other people who would like to earn a decent income. Thank you so much for uh, joining us and um, thank also the Vice Minister of Agriculture already for providing uh, the report. It is of immense importance that we also hear from uh, Kyrgyzstan. Before I go to Tajikistan, I would like to go to the Philippines because um, Dr. Asusena has been able with her team to take care of the technical uh, challenges, Dr. Asusena, and apparently you are ready to take the floor right now. Thank you much, and, very much. Yeah. Yes. Uh, actually, uh, there is really a threat for the country's malnutrition and hunger prevalence to further increase due to the impact of COVID-19 and the food crisis and the fuel increase, uh, price increases. So this also threatens for the food, nutrition, and health-related program costs due to increase uh, due to inflation. So with this, these are the solutions. So. The National Nutrition Council, BOH, has been advocating to have sufficient and increased investments for nutrition through the conduct of webinars, capacity building of local chief executives with recognizable nutrition efforts through the Nutrition Champions Program and among others. Now, we have convened yesterday a small group meeting uh, composed of the Department of Energy. Uh, they said that the Department of Energy Philippines formulated already the National Renewable Energy Program or the NREP, which seeks to increase the renewable energy based capacity of the country to cover 300% more of households by 2030 from 2010. And also, we are very fortunate that the Department of Agriculture is geared towards agricultural transformation by adopting the 1DA or one Department of Agriculture Reform Agenda and Food Security Framework. This reform agenda is anchored on modernization, industrialization, value change-based consolidation, and professionalization being undertaken through a whole of, whole of nation and whole of government approach. Verda and friends, we are very fortunate again that no less than President-elect, Pres President Marcos, Ferdinand Marcos Jr. in his meeting with the Department of Agriculture because he is the concurrent Minister of Agriculture here in the Philippines. Uh, he held a meeting yesterday, held a meeting yesterday, and he said that there is really a need to formulate and operationalize a multi-year plan to reconstruct the food value chain. The President prioritized to address food sufficiency by directing the Department of Agriculture officials to craft policies and legislation towards attaining food security. Also, the Department of Trade and Industry carefully evaluates the request for price adjustments from the manufacturers of basic necessities and prime commodities in its latest suggested retail prices list. Now, the Department of Trade and Industry Philippines and the relevant industries Example, food industry collaborates in ensuring that Filipino consumers could have high quality products at affordable prices. Now, despite the adjustments of several basic and prime goods, now the, the Department of Trade and Industry guides the Filipino public consumers that all increases in the suggested retail process prices were kept to a min minimum level to provide consumers with reasonably priced goods amidst the pandemic. Also, um, we would like to emphasize that the Department of Agriculture is strengthened the implementation of the following programs, projects, and activities. Number one is the fertilizer voucher scheme. This is for farmer beneficiaries, especially on rice producers, corn, and cassava farmers. No? They are allowed to claim inorganic fertilizers because of the increased price in fertilizer here in the country. So. Uh, the Department of Agriculture is issuing fertilizer vouchers uh, using discount vouchers from accredited merchants of the Department of Agriculture. They also have complete distribution of rice farmer financial assistance program. Aside from the fertilizer subsidy, the Department of Agriculture continues to distribute financial aid, 
starting last April 2022 to assist the farmers' needs amid the soaring fuel prices and to compensate for the projected income loss due to the drop of the rice farm gate prices. Further, um, the flagship program, the agri-fishery marketing program, the Department of Agriculture being implemented nationwide that offers farmers the best prices for their goods while providing affordable, safe, and nutritious food to Filipino households. It was further enhanced during the COVID-19 pandemic when farmers' food produce was brought to the cities through rented trucks and issuance of food passes to facilitate its entry into the urban center. And also worthwhile mentioning is the capital access for young agripreneurs. No? This started last January 2022. This encouraged the youth who are agri-fishery graduates to engage in agriculture, fishery, and agribusiness ventures through the provision of credit and capacity building, contributing to the government's strategy to address the aging population of Filipino farmers. And lastly, Gerda, the Philippines is about to craft the successor Philippine Plan of Action for Nutrition. And we will be doing this this coming July 13 to 15. And we are inviting again our multi spectral platform, the Sun Business, the Sun Academy, and also the other networks like the donor networks to join us in the crafting of the Philippine Plan of Action for Nutrition 2023 to 2028 to really uh, focus put focus on a convergent program that is geared towards country-led, country-driven uh, nutrition programs here in the country. That would be all, Gerda. Thank you very much. Back to you. Thank you very much, Dr. Asusena. I have two questions for you. One is, um, is um, social protection involved in the current actions? And for the future, um, I can hear from uh, several countries, but also from Philippines, and that is great. There is a strong focus on um, developing the agriculture and food uh, sector and system. Is nutrition well included in all these new agriculture and food um, activities and initiatives? Over to yes. you. Yes, definitely, Gerda. I think to mention that national, the national nutrition pro, the national nutrition council, which is my agency, uh, is coordinating in all the member agencies of the national nutrition council governing board to really put premium investments on nutrition program uh, that is uh, that is inscribed in the Philippine Plan of Action for Nutrition, especially 2023 to 2028. This is to continue our investments. Uh, so that malnutrition problem here in the Philippines will uh, be solved uh, in due time. No? So we would like to emphasize further that indeed uh, with the advent of uh, Mandana's Garcia ruling, which there is an increased allocation of 35% more of budget of the local government units, we are really advocating day by day and you know, day by day, 24 7 to all our nutrition champions, the local chief executives, to really put investments on nutrition program, the Philippine Plan of Action for Nutrition, that is uh, consisting of nutrition-specific, nutrition-sensitive, and enabling programs, uh, because our objective really is to reduce all forms of malnutrition in the country. Thank you, Gerda. Back to you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Asusena, and I'm quite sure that in the question and answer round, there will be more to be discussed, not only by you, but by all representatives. And thank you all 62 participants for uh, joining. If you have already a question, don't hesitate, put it in the chat box, uh, raise your hand, because um, we will hear from um, a few other um, representatives and then we will come to, we will open the Q&A discussion. First, I have been informed by Savita that PNG Wilson, uh, Papua New Guinea, Wilson Karoke um, is now connected and is ready to speak up. And then we hope to hear from uh, Tajikistan. Um, so Tajikistan, please prepare yourself. You will get the floor after Wilson Karoke. Wilson, are you able to speak up? 
Yes, uh, good uh, evening to you, madam, and uh, to everybody that is on this call. Uh, can you hear me uh, well? Over, over to you. Loud and clear, Wilson. You have the floor. Thank you. Uh, firstly, thank you. Uh, this is the first time I'm joining uh, such a call uh, with uh, with the uh, with Sun, and I'm happy to be uh, part of this call. Firstly, I just give a brief rundown on uh, the, 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 what is happening in PNG, and uh, we'll go on from there. So, thank you. Uh, firstly, the price of food and uh, goods in the country are heavily affected uh, with the war in Ukraine. Uh, more recently, the government have decided to, you know, uh, subsidize the basic uh, foods like the rice, the tea, uh, the flour, but it is uh, with no effect, including, of course, uh, the fuel. Or, but it is uh, having a lot of, uh, it's in the, that is not working uh, well. There are so many other problems also uh, affecting uh, the country now. Right now, as I speak, the country is uh, going into the polls. We are in the, at the polls now. And many people, many rural farmers and those in the agriculture sector have not been working uh, because they were on campaign trails, listening to, you know, moving from uh, from politicians campaign um, rallies to other rallies and they've not been working well in the nutrition sector and also the agriculture sector. So compounded with that, there is also El Nino uh, uh, in some parts of the islands of Papua New Guinea, where we are having uh, some uh, shortage uh, in the areas of food production, and compounded with our existing, you know, uh, uh, issue of malnutrition. Uh, of course, PNG is one of uh, the countries in Asia Pacific with the highest uh, standing rate of over uh, about forty-five percent or so for children under five. Our problem at end is uh, quite big uh, in terms of uh, food and uh, prices of food and uh, all that. Of course, uh, with that, the government seen that we have these issues, uh, they've addressed the nutrition at the highest level, uh, what we call the SLOS, uh, that's S-L-O-S, uh, what we call the low, social low uh, sector where nutrition is addressed uh, and what we call the FTI, Fast Track Initiative, to reduce stunting. Uh, with that, uh, the government has uh, sought out a loan from the World Bank of US 80 million. And uh, with counterpart funding from uh, DFET, that's from the Australian government, of another 10 million uh, USD. So we have, uh, the country has secured almost about 90 million uh, to to help uh, in two, two specific areas. One is to uh, what we call the PNG CARES, that is uh, PNG for Papua New Guinea, uh, CARES, C-A-R-E-S for community uh, actions on reducing standing. That's where we want to, you know, uh, do uh, implementation at the, at the community level mostly to, uh, to put interventions that can work towards reducing standing. The other component is uh, what we call the uh, nutrition grant to children or households uh, within the 1,000 days households in selected province. So from this uh, funding that we will get alone, we have about 101 districts, but we will be implementing only in uh, 19 districts in the country out of that uh, loan funding from the World Bank. So, uh, so far for now, that is, I think, one of the, the interventions that uh, with this funding that we have in the country available to us to actually work towards reducing standing and also to improve uh, you know, social protection for children uh, and households within the 1,000 uh, days uh, the period. So, uh, yes. Uh, all in all, that's where we are in the country. Uh, of course, like I said, uh, we are still struggling to get out of 
our standing rates, and um, of course we are there now. So that's just a brief uh, I wanted to provide uh, going forward. So if there's any specific questions in the Q&A uh, there, then I will be happy to answer. But for now, that's all I wanted to flag here for uh, this uh, meeting. Uh, thank you. Wilson, so good to have you in this meeting for the first time. Most welcome, but please stay connected because um, we have some um, uh, focal points and other very experienced people in other countries. If you have a question yourself, and I'm quite sure there might be also questions for you, so stay tuned, stay connect connected. And if you have a question for other countries, are you interested in learning from there or sharing something, please don't hesitate because that is the spirit um, of the Sun Movement to to learn from each other, to inspire each other. But thank you very much for um, elaborating about the um, uh, challenging and complicated situation um, in um, uh, uh, Papua New Guinea, like in many countries, but every country has its own specific uh, complexity and uh, challenge. Let me then go to Tajikistan. And after Tajikistan, I, we hope to hear from Lao PDR. Dr. Um, Sulfia Abduzamatsoda. Abduzamatsoda, are you there to speak up on behalf of Tajikistan? Hello, do you hear me? Yes, we hear you, Mansuro. Yeah, I, yes, I, 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 my name is Maksud Mansuro. I, I'm uh, now uh, representing Tajikistan, but uh, Unfortunately, Dr. Abdul Samad Zoda could not uh, be could not present in this meeting. Yes, I, and uh, and I am uh, working uh, as a GIZ on behalf of GIZ, uh, providing administrative, mostly administrative and technical support for the Ministry of Health, who is coordinating the sun activities in Tajikistan. And uh, yes. Uh, uh, unfortunately, I am not aware about the crisis uh, plans, uh, activities of the government on the uh, within the crisis. But yes, uh, I'm I'm providing only the administrative uh, support to the uh, Dr. Abdul Samad Zoda in the, in these activities. Yeah, Dr. Mansurov, Mansurov, we are extremely happy to have you in this uh, conversation. I hope you will be able to, you're doing important work on behalf of GIZ, the German uh, 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 initiative. Yes, yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah, very good. Yes. Uh, please take notes and uh, make sure that you report to Dr. Uh, Sophia, so that maybe uh -huh. next time Dr. Sophia will be also uh, there. And if there are things um, you as Tajikistan or Dr. Sophia as Sun Movement Focal Point wants to learn from other countries or wants to share uh, with uh, us on the current situation in uh, Tajikistan, because we all um, are aware of also the complexities and the, uh, the challenges in Tajikistan so that um, they can be shared uh, with others or concrete uh, demands can be submitted for support or TA or what have you. Suggestions and ideas are of course also welcome. <clears throat> then let me go to Lao PDR. Lao PDR, Dr. Uh, Fone Savan or Mr. Maiko, are you there to speak up on behalf of Lao PDR? Somebody was whispering into my ear that Lao PDR would be connected. Apparently, that is not the case. Then let me check whether Yemen is. Savita, is Lao PDR connected? Uh, yes, Gordo, they got disconnected, the government. I'm trying to, to get them connected again. However, we do have uh, from World Vision, we have uh, Kuber Adhikari uh, in yeah. to speak. Thank you. 
Yeah, Savita um, and um, a representative from World Vision let us wait and see until uh, uh, whether we could reconnect the focal point. Um, otherwise, we will come to the representative uh, in allow PDR from World Vision. But let us give it a try. One more, and let me first go to Cambodia. Is somebody from, from Cambodia or Yemen connected? Because we are doing a great job. We have heard from most of the countries. In the meantime, Yemen, Cambodia. Dr. Soxilo. Uh, Gerda, Dr. Soxilo, I don't know. I think he got, got called away for a meeting. However, we have. Lao PDR. We have Michael. He's ready. Michael. Okay, Michael, please take the floor. Yes, uh, I'm Michael Rongsai from the uh, representative from the Digital Center, Ministry of Health, Lao PDR. Yes, uh, it's very happy to uh, join the meeting today. Yeah. Michael, um, let me ask you uh, a few questions because we have organized this webinar with um, uh, uh, Asian and uh, 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 Asian um, uh, uh, members of the of the scaling up nutrition uh, movement, and um, we are um, organizing a peer to peer exchange on the current situation in food and nutrition. We are all aware of the impact of COVID. We're all aware of the impact of the food price uh, uh, crisis and the fertilizers and the fuel, et cetera. And we want to hear how Lao PDR is responding to this. On the short notice, when it comes to humanitarian, social protection, nutrition services, but also on the longer term. Are you able to elaborate a little bit on what is happening in Lao PDR and um, what you want to share about this. Michael, okay. please. Okay. So during the COVID pandemic uh, until now, and uh, last time we have uh, uh, many, many crises of uh, right, uh, on nutrition, but uh, now we have a deep breath. we have a joint uh, the nutrition program or nutrition uh, through the the national uh, COVID strategy. We already add uh, some intervention or the, some uh, activity to the national COVID uh, strategy for uh, PCNS during the COVID uh, outbreak. So we have uh, we have de developed uh, the new uh, national. Excellent Plan, that's not Nutrition Excellent Plan 2071 to and also we have uh, some uh, in food security to add uh, some intervention in the National Plan of Action. And also we have a uh, 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 working with the, some the donor, right? For example, the FRO, we have UNICEF, we have the World Food Program to develop uh, some uh, guideline and tune for uh, PPNets during their the crisis situation. This is a loud PDR we have uh, uh, preparing uh, during this situation. Yeah. Michael, can I? Yeah, please yeah, go yeah. ahead. And also, we uh, have to develop some the uh, as it, how do you say? It? We have developed the emergency uh, guidelines uh, with the corporate with UNICEF and also donor and some civil society to look at together on what planning we have to to do when we have uh, the the disaster or the, we have the crisis crisis situation like the COVID-19 uh, pandemics, for example, yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Michael. Um, 
and it's very <clears throat> informative. Michael, can you elaborate a little bit about um, what is the what is um, Lao PDR, the government, but also the stakeholders anticipating as a potential longer term solution uh, for investment in um, food and nutrition security on the longer term in Lao PDR? Is, for instance, the food systems pathway uh, implemented or what is the what is the focus over to you so the, the government uh, have uh, informed like the vc of how to to quickly do the like the national covid strategy it's also involved in all elements of the health sector we have the agriculture and some the social economics as well so the government has uh, made the priority on uh, this action and also allocate some funding to uh, to do the, some intervention during the crisis. And also we have uh, closely work with the World Food Program, World Food Program and FAO for planning together when we have uh, in the future, we don't know is the crisis, the, the problem will be happen again. And we don't know the COVID-19 will be go back, uh, come back again. We have to uh, prepare preparation in this situation, yeah. Yeah. Okay, Michael, thank you very much. One final question. When you're talking about investment in uh, agriculture and social protection, is nutrition uh, well represented? Are you at the table um, to make sure that nutrition is um, implemented from an investment perspective and from a prevention perspective in food to make food not only having enough calories, but also to have the right nutritious value. value. Yes, uh, the, the Ministry of Health is a representative for the tech leads on the nutrition and food security with the multi-sectoral. We have the many sector. So we have put some the two indicator for nutrition, stunting and wasting on these two indicator have been already in the common agenda and the national assembly of the approved. So is the this the indicator for nutrition is linked to all the sector have to uh, reduce the malnutrition and then to have to food availability from agriculture. They have the four uh, intervention to promote the uh, food accessibility and uh, food consumption available in Laosida. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, Michael. Please stay tuned. If you have questions to other countries, other Asian uh, uh, countries, we also have Tajikistan and Pakistan, and sorry, and Tajikistan and uh, Kyrgyzstan. Um, um, and before I open the floor for people who want to speak up or for Q and A's, I would like to finally uh, see whether Pakistan. Um, is now online and Cambodia. We have been informed in the meantime that Yemen is not able to connect. Tomorrow we will have our uh, a meeting, a webinar with African countries and we hope that Yemen will be able to participate there because we would like to hear from every uh, country and to have every sun, uh, all uh, sun, 65 uh, sun movement countries to be engaged. Um, Pakistan, uh, Dr. Nazir Ahmed, are you there? Or Cambodia, Dr. Soxi Lo. Not yet. I know that many people are working behind the scenes, the scenes to uh, get connected to uh, the countries. Sometimes it is difficult because of connection problems. Sometimes it's difficult because of agendas and sometimes it is just time. 
um, but we are trying to find the best uh, time. But in some of your countries, it's already night. Um, and in some, it is uh, afternoon. And in some, it just was noon. Um, so let me open the floor for, uh, for Q and A's or reactions. If you want, I invite you to uh, push the reaction buttons and in the reaction buttons, there is a, a hand that you can raise, but you can also um, ask in the chat box to, um, to get the floor. More than happy to um, open the floor for civil society representatives of any country who would like to sp speak up. Um, business network representatives uh, are there on the call. Uh, please give us your uh, perspectives, what is happening and what can and should be done short term and longer term. And also consider, uh, my invitation is consider also financial uh, support when it comes to, for instance, um, regional financial institutes, uh, regional institutes like uh, social economic institutes like uh, uh, ASEAN, um, um, what can the UN uh, General Assembly uh, do? Are there messages you want us to take to the global uh, crisis and response group? It is all possible because we have 35 minutes to uh, further speak up, speak out, and discuss. Who would like to take the floor? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, there is a represent for from Action Against Hunger. Um, sir, madam, are you able and ready to take the floor and elaborate a little bit on your question about rising temperature and elevated CO2 levels that can reduce the quality and nutrition, uh, uh, nutrient density in staple crops? Um, action against hunger. Uh, are you ready to speak up? Then, if this is the case, um, please take the floor. Apparently, this is not the case. You are um, asking the question. Let me um, um, ask this question to um, uh, Pakistan and maybe Vietnam um, as well. And let's see whether um, Dr. Kiran and um, Dr. Um, from Vietnam, uh, Phong uh, Hoon, is, from who, who is uh, able to answer this. There are studies that show that rising temperature and elevated CO2 levels can reduce the quality, the nutrient den density of staple crops. Are there any policies programs in place in your country that can mitigate the consequences of climate change in food and nutrition security? It is a little bit a technical uh, question, um, but it is a question, let me um, ask, Dr. Kiran to come in and then we go to Fong uh, Hoon, um, unless somebody else would like to jump in here. And then for the rest of the speakers, other participants, uh, 64 as we speak, please um, come forward if you have anything to add or anything to ask. Dr. Kiran, are you able to elaborate on this? Hello. Yes, please. Please uh, introduce. Uh, Prativa, you uh, have the floor. 
make sure that there are no other micros that are on, make sure that they are all on mute and then try it again, please. Hello, this is Pratiba. I'm, I'm uh, talking on uh, from Dr. Kiran. So he's, uh, he will uh, respond to the meetings uh, within five minutes. Okay, very good, very good, very good. Thank you very much for this. Then we come back to him. Um, Pyong Hun uh, from uh, Vietnam, are you able to respond on the question on climate change, how it is, um, how CO2 two emissions are impacting already um, the nutritious value of uh, uh, produced food? Uh, uh, I'm, I'm in not in the right position to answer this question. Is uh, like that said, it's very uh, technical and it's more for the agriculture sector to 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 talk about this. Uh, currently, um, ADPC, which is an Asian Disaster Preparedness Center, they just started a new project here in Vietnam on the city resilient to uh, climate ex uh, extremes uh, in Vietnam. They also have an approach. Uh, to um, uh, connect like the, call the capacity building for sector. But unfortunately, they do not uh, integrate uh, agriculture in, uh, in one part of this because they work mostly in urban area. But I think it's a very good idea to uh, consider this uh, as a study. Uh, so I will talk with my agriculture sector to see if in their field, they already have some kind of research to share. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much for um, uh, Fion, um, for speaking up and speaking out, though you are right, it is a technical question, but it is part and parcel of the uh, food systems pathways that countries are considering, because let's not forget the rethinking and the renewing of the food systems is just about this, to make food production and consumption more healthy, more nutritious, but also to make food production and consumption more sustainable when it comes to, um, to emissions and to uh, the climate and the use of natural resources. But thank you already for taking this two into uh, account. Can I, can we, I ask um, uh, Mahesh Karel from Nepal to take the floor because Mahesh, we have heard that you have participated um, in the uh, pre-Food Systems uh, Summit in Rome and that you are very much engaged in the Food Systems Pathway in uh, Nepal. Are you ready to take the floor and elaborate a little bit on the um, climate impact, the emissions impact on the nutritious value of food? Uh, thank you, Gerda. Uh, actually, most of the major uh, issues are already highlighted by Dr. Kiran Rupakheti, who is also Division Chief of the National Planning Commission. Uh, in fact, uh, there is no additional to add, uh, uh, add another point, but uh, as uh, Dr. Kiran already said that we are organizing a fourth national Food system dialogue uh, very soon. In that um, in that uh, in that uh, time, we will discuss uh, more vigorously how we can uh, tackle this uh, this uh, this problem uh, uh, this problem uh, for the coming days. Especially now, we are facing this uh, crisis also. Especially in. Uh, there are some prices are increasing in food, uh, food, and uh, there is a uh, price increases in um, energy also. So we will discuss coming days in the uh, fourth national food system dialogue, and uh, we'll make some uh, implementable action plan for the coming days. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mahesh, for just uh, jumping in uh, here, and all the best in implementing. Um, uh, the prevention of further CO2 impact in food systems in the new food system that is rolled out in many countries. <clears throat> uh, 
And um, we are very uh, happy as Sun Movement that you all, all uh, participants, um, uh, are in one way or another in, um, included in the uh, rollout and the setup of the new food systems, food system in your country to uh, uh, reduce dependency of food imports, but also to improve the nutritious uh, value of food and to reduce the climate uh, uh, impact of your food systems and hopefully also to prevent food losses and, uh, and waste. So we can only encourage you to um, move on and step up further because that is also what we hear from other countries. Short term reaction is social protection and making sure that people receive support that is um, investing, preventing uh, malnutrition and in, is investing in their uh, health, well-being and uh, nutrition. Longer term is to become less reliant on uh, food imports, but more producing um, in your own uh, country, making sure that uh, farmers, food producers, fishers, forestry uh, uh, food producers can earn a decent uh, income and can provide people with healthy, affordable and available food. Um, Priyanka Bashnet, would you please take the floor and ask your question? On, um, that you have put in the chat box. Um, hi, can you hear me? We can hear you. Is it also possible to open your camera? Yes. There we go. Um, I'm Priyanka. I'm a nutrition advisor at SNB in Laos. Um, and as Michael uh, mentioned, um, Laos... Oh, uh, Priyanka, Priyanka, SNV, explain a little bit because we there are so many abbreviations. So give us your background a little bit. Okay, I cannot actually say SNV in the Dutch way. I think you would be better at saying it, but it's a Dutch uh, INGO and we work on agriculture, uh, nutrition, wash, and energy. And here in Laos, uh, we're working on a, a nutrition sensitive uh, project, which focuses on uh, nutrition SPCC, uh, uh, nutrition sensitive agriculture and wash. Um, and my question is in regards to what every country is facing right now with the looming uh, price, uh, the Ukraine price effects, which we are already seeing. Here also in Laos, the oil prices have gone up, food prices are go going up. And uh, since Laos is so heavily dependent on uh, donor funding for most of our nutrition programs, in the short term, what are the most effective responses that we should be preparing for? Because uh, we only see this getting worse uh, in the future. And Laos just opened recently in April as well. Uh, so, um, I mean, I've already heard Nepal, uh, Dr. Rupa Kethi mentioning about uh, um, having buffer stocks, which Laos doesn't have. So, which are the things that uh, maybe different countries can share that we should be advocating for the limited donor funding that we have currently on nutrition? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Priyanka, for coming to the uh, to the camera and asking these uh, questions. Limited resources, how can we prioritize in order to serve as much as possible, many as possible people and children and focus as much as possible on uh, 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 nutrition? It is heard. Let us see whether there is somebody who would like to answer. Otherwise, I'm going to ask somebody. Um, Okay, doctor, I have been informed that Dr. Fono Saban, uh, Keo Nakon, uh, um, the director of the National Nutrition Center for Lao PDR has joined now. I will give um, him um, the um, or her the floor in a second, but I would like to see whether we can get an answer to this question. And then we come to the to uh, Lao PDR to our Sun Movement focal point. Um, 
when it comes to prioritizing um, the investment of fundings of donors, who is ready to um, answer this one? Can I come back to Bangladesh, Dr. Kazi or Dr. Bubu? Are you able to elaborate a little bit how you are working with donor funding that is scarce? Uh, hello. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Okay. Uh, actually, um, we are working with our um, Issue, uh, different issues uh, uh, with like government and uh, of course uh, with uh, development partners and uh, uh, div uh, different um, organizations through our OP. We have operational plan for nutrition and uh, uh, nutritional other services. You know, we have an uh, Institute of, um, of Nutrition and we have National Nutrition Service. And uh, we have uh, Sun um, platforms, and we work uh, all uh, of these uh, organizations. We work together, and uh, to ensure uh, nutrition, we have to work with our 22 ministries, who are very much relevant uh, to ensure uh, this uh, food and nutrition and supply chain and commerce and. Uh, law and order and the policies and marketing, everything actually, uh, all we need to work together. And also we have uh, 12 commitments uh, uh, during last uh, Nutrition for Growth uh, Summit. So now uh, is, we are planning to uh, formulate action plan, uh, how to ensure all those activities uh, implement together and during, uh, uh, next five years we can implement all those uh, things to ensure nutrition and healthy uh, life in Bangladesh. I want to uh, uh, say a little bit uh, on how uh, our government is uh, you know, uh, trying to mitigate this uh, current crisis due to COVID-19 situation and other uh, problems regarding um, flood and natural disasters and also global things. I would like to uh, say a few things because, you know, to mitigate the uh, negative impact of COVID-19 on livelihood, the government has initiated a number of measures which include cash and food distribution through the local administration, administrative structures, open market sale of foods, uh, uh, subsidized price, increased number of beneficiaries through existing social safety net programs, et cetera. Uh, the government has also initiated um, several stimulus packages to prevent the economic meltdown uh, resulting from lockdown and other, you know, uh, uh, um, drawbacks of uh, this crisis. At local level, individuals, private philanthropies, uh, tropics and uh, civil society organizations have been extending their help to support poor and vulnerable people in our country. So government is trying to cope up with the situation um, and uh, with the plans to develop a comprehensive food and nutrition security plan, protection and strengthening of no ongoing uh, programs and services, prevention of uh, hunger and malnutrition, focus on poor and near poor and gender, geographical coverage and focus on more effective geographical locations based on composite indicators, support small and medium, medium enterprises for food and nutrition security, and support farmers, food systems and food supplies, focus on children and women for promotion of nutrition, et cetera, et cetera. And you know, um, uh, we are moving from uh, sector one, a uh, fourth sector program to a fifth sector program that is health, um, uh, population and nutrition program. We have this uh, sector program and we have 22 operation plans under the sector programs. And uh, the name includes that uh, how uh, nutrition 
uh, we are really emphasizing on our sector programs. So it's a huge programs to ensure health and uh, other issues related to healthy life. Um, for long-term plan, uh, in the eight five-year plan of Bangladesh, government has emphasized on six priority sectors, that is rep, uh, to a rapid recovery from COVID-19 to restore human health, confidence, employment, income, and economic activities. By giving the highest priority to this agenda, uh, government is trying to boost up the confidence level of the people by strengthening the public health system, creating job opportunities by keeping economic activities uh, normal. At the same time, government is trying to increase productivity. So all for all these things, uh, we, we are trying to uh, ensure food security. And despite the crisis uh, arising from various uh, reasons, um, our uh, production, we, we always try to keep our production of agriculture uh, uninterrupted and achieve food and nutritional security. Government has bought rice and other food grains from the local market and they have sold it uh, under their own management, government management, so that nobody can uh, create any artificial crisis or anything for the people. So uh, this is one of the best, uh, uh, you know, uh, step. Okay, Dr. Yes. Kazi. Yes, very good. Thank you very much. It's not really a really <laughs> question, but it's interesting. It's very interesting uh, information. And this is also something that we should try to, um, to uh, exchange. Um, um, let me- I want, to, I want to say last, uh, if, you, if you allow me for a few seconds, just a few yeah, seconds. Yeah, yeah. That is, that is uh, we, are, uh, we are emphasizing on implementing our uh, 12 commitments, which we have in our honorable prime minister has announced. Uh, but uh, what I feel uh, that we need uh, very strong support from uh, global, you know, Sun and other, uh, you know, international agencies to implement all those uh, commitments for the future Bangladesh and for future world. Actually, I think this support we really want from your side and your strong. I know you are very strong and you are very, you know, uh, encouraging ladies. So we hope to have your support. Uh, yeah. to implement all those things. Thank you. I think you have my full support and you have the, su the support of the whole Sun movement. Um, we are all there to, to support each other. Uh, but thinking about this, my uh, suggestion also to for advocacy would be that um, the leaders of your government, so your prime minister, but all prime ministers and presidents, speak up and speak out during the UN General Assembly. Their food and nutrition needs to be addressed because if you don't invest in good nutrition, in malnutrition prevention, you are creating the problems for the next decades for the economy and your country. So whoever, um, Sun Movement focal points, teams, technical focal points, civil society, private sector, or business and business network, donors, whoever. I will speak up uh, on this wherever I can, but please encourage your government leadership to really um, uh, make this a, a, a priority. Um, thank you very much, uh, uh, Kazi. I have Dr. Kiran who has raised his hand and I would like to invite uh, representatives of civil society, uh, business, uh, business, uh, UN, uh, and or donors who are in this call to um, come forward and take the floor and give your perspectives or ask your question. But first, we go to Dr. Kiran. You have the floor. Uh, Gerda, thank you very much. Uh, the discussion is very thought-provoking, uh, very important, you know, ideas have come up. Actually, they are very uh, beneficial to all of us to frame our, you know, future intervention in this area. Uh, regarding this, you know, donor issues, actually, uh, I, I floated this idea uh, two months back when we were in Geneva also uh, during our retreat. Actually, um, what I feel is that, um, that uh, uh, we need to work further 
through our you know uh, donor uh, some donor network uh, to align the priorities of countries with the priorities of the donor. Uh, there is no doubt that donors have been supporting for the cause of nutrition in our country. We, we really salute and praise you know their efforts and initiatives. But at the time of crisis and when there is you know, some sort of you know, calamities or in, in emergency, it's very difficult to you know, um, uh, gender resources for that very cause uh, because uh, donors are also uh, having some sort of you know, uh, very strict uh, and non-flexible sort of you know, uh, set up and mechanism to generate more resources. So this is one of the area I think we need to look into and. Um, SMS, some moment um, can be a better platform to talk about this in future. This is one of the area I would like to talk about. And, um, you know, um, um, Silu Sakya, who is working in World Food Program in Kathmandu, looking after some business network issue here, she has raised a very pertinent question actually uh, through the chat box. She was, you know, raising concern over here how we can motivate private sector to come uh, uh, into this whole you know, paradigm, actually helping um, the, for the cause of the nutrition. Actually, for your kind information, Gerda, we have launched uh, some business network in Nepal. We have got our new strategy and we are you know, in a row, we are having different uh, program and uh, trying to build up our relationship with the private sector, how we can, how they can be made more instrumental for the cause of the, you know, uh, achieving the target we have set for through multi-sector nutrition plan second. So these are the two points I would like to highlight over here. Thank you, over to you, Gerda. Thank you very much. Um, I hope other um, uh, country representatives are able to uh, react on this. Um, otherwise, Dr. Kiran, my suggestion would be to um, announce this already to be discussed also in the next uh, EXCOM meeting, because this is a very important uh, topic. And since you are representing many countries in the uh, executive committee, I think this is a critical point. You've made it during the retreat, but it needs to be addressed and discussed in the next uh, EXCOM meeting, because it's crucial. Yeah. Um, Thank you. On how, on how um, uh, some business networks can step up. Let me ask whether in the 60 participants that are still engaged, and thank you for being here, is there a representative of the Sun Business Network who would like to speak up and speak out and give examples, share examples on how businesses are stepping up to respond to the current food and nutrition crisis? Emily, Rita, are you here? Are you participating? If this is not the case, can I uh, ask civil society representatives or business uh, representatives or other UN rep or UN representatives or donor representatives to take the floor? Yeah. Okay. Then I go come uh, back. Gerda, this is Melanie. Yeah, Melanie, please. Melanie is um, participants is the um, convener is the coordinator of the Sun Donor Network. So Melanie, you have the floor. Yes. Uh, thank you so much for this opportunity to speak up and a very interesting discussion so far. Um, and uh, yes, Dr. Kiran, we have heard you before, um, and uh, there's not such an easy answer. The donors are um, representative of governments, and governments are not as flexible at times as we would like them to be. However, we will further discuss, um, there are certain funding mechanisms that are slightly more flexible. Um, we have our representative, Neil Watkins, and um, I will reconvene the SDN shortly in this month and then we can take this up. But I wanted to um, respond or rather um, place a question to Indonesia. I know 
they have left, but I found their input very interesting. It was in the chat box regarding the fiscal transfers. And uh, if uh, at a later stage uh, we could learn a bit more, that would be really interesting for the for me, the SDN representative. Thank you so much, Gerda. Yeah. Thank you very much, Melanie, for taking the floor and speaking up and your strong commitment to um, uh, try to align uh, donors uh, much more. Who else? Because we are um, coming to the final round of potential uh, uh, questions and answers here. Right. If this is not the case, let me try to um, summarize what we have heard here. Um, first of all, I would like to thank uh, all of you, both the focal points, their teams, the representatives of the Sun Civil Society, the representatives of UN of some business networks at country level and the representatives of uh, the donors who are listening in and all members of the global support system, the SMS, but also uh, the network secretariat. This webinar um, was to listen to each other and to hear from each other, but it's only a moment in time. As Sun Movement, we continue to um, uh, foster and nudge exchange because um, um, countries can learn a lot from each other, can inspire each other, and can also feed um, uh, me and uh, other colleagues at the global level to speak up and speak out on your behalf. For instance, in discussions on nutrition in the World Health Assembly, for instance, on uh, topics on nutrition in with uh, the donors, with in Brussels, uh, but also in FAO uh, and WFP and IFED and wherever, at all levels, including in financial institutions, food and nutrition security should also be uh, always be combined. When I'm listening to uh, global leaders, they talk about a food security crisis or a food price crisis. Well, there is a food and nutrition uh, uh, crisis and we need to address uh, the food and nutrition uh, topics together, hand in hand, one without the other will not do, while at the same time, we need to respect the climate. What I've heard from you, and thank you and correct me if I'm wrong, is that first of all, in all countries, you are trying to respond to uh, the current uh, situation that is coming on top of the uh, crisis that is created by COVID and on top of the crisis of cyclones, floods and other uh, uh, challenges that you are, uh, uh, are facing. You're focusing on nutrition services. You're focusing on providing social protection or fiscal uh, measurements for people to maintain to take care of their own nutrition and of the nutrition of their uh, uh, family members. You, I have heard that all of you are focusing on, or all of your countries are focusing on investing in food systems that can produce healthy and nutritious food while at the same time are focusing on uh, ways of producing that is climate friendly, is uh, uh, adapting climate change or even uh, contributing to mitigation of uh, climate change. While at the same time, and that's also what we have heard, uh, it is to provide young people with decent jobs and all people with a decent income. So the investment in food systems is something that we also learned from other countries, other Sun Movement member countries, gear up the, the speed with which you are transforming your food system because it is creating the opportunity to find alternatives for um, the imported uh, food, alternatives that are nutritious, that uh, um, can provide healthy 
uh, and tasty uh, uh, meals to all family uh, uh, members. So this is something I would like to encourage you uh, to do. Um, I would also like to encourage you to continue to do the advocacy for the government to speak up and speak out in the regional socioeconomic organizations like ASEAN, SARC, uh, et cetera, to make sure that they support these organizations, support the transition towards food systems, and while at the same time focus on mitigating the impact on uh, uh, people, because we all know that the most vulnerable are already hit hardest and will be uh, hit hardest. And amongst them, uh, uh, women are especially vulnerable. I used to say um, um, in crisis, women are often hit first, hit hardest, and are hit uh, uh, longest. So a special investment in uh, women who are, let's not forget, giving birth to uh, next generations, um, want to be able to deliver a healthy baby and could it be breastfeed it uh, during the first month. So let us invest in uh, the most vulnerable and let us have pay uh, special attention to uh, women. But move on um, in your involvement in food systems and let us gear it up in order to uh, create your own food production and be less dependent of imports. I would also like to um, conclude that um, making advocacy for to governments to invest in nutrition while at the same time uh, do advocacy to governments to speak up at the global level when it comes to also the space in the national budget to invest in people. Um, too many countries right now need to invest in their people, but they get more indebted, they get more dependent of loans um, uh, um, from international financial institutions, be it development uh, banks, be it uh, private investors, be it the World Bank uh, or what have you. But governments need to be able to invest and not put aside first a big part of the national budget. And I would like to encourage all advocacy uh, people um, and uh, partners in uh, the some, uh, multi stakeholder and multi sectoral uh, platforms to do the advocacy to your governments to speak up in the UN General Assembly that there are new financial instruments are necessary to make it possible for governments to uh, invest in their own society, in their own people, and not get further uh, uh, indebted. Um, so this is also something, be it through debt swaps, through other instruments by IMF, but make sure that countries do not become more dependent, but that governments can be held to account to support their own people. And having said this, UN General Assembly is happening in September, World Bank meeting is happening in uh, the spring meetings are happening, sorry, the autumn meetings are happening in October, but speaking up, speaking out at these global platforms is of immense importance. Finally, I would like to emphasize what has been uh, said by Dr. Kiran, um, how can we work hand in hand and together to make sure that donors are aligning behind the priorities and the needs of a country and are encouraged to not uh, uh, drive their own priorities, but to work together at the country level and to align behind the government once there is an agreed way forward. All right, let me, um, let me uh, see Merlin Shapfunga has said, some challenges include the limited or no access uh, of nutritious foods, especially to the hard to reach population due to increasing prices uh, or inaccessibility. How can the private sector and donor community help out governments to ensure that we do not leave anyone behind and kick out? Um, thank you very much for this question, Marilyn. 
um, happy that you are speaking out and speaking up, but I would have encouraged you to come in a little bit earlier, um, but I think this is a message to all of us. Um, if we are preventing a more malnutrition, if we are investing in people, let us make sure that we um, uh, uh, always have an eye, keep an eye on those who are uh, 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 left furthest uh, uh, behind, uh, not to forget them, because um, if we are to create a better world, it is um, a, a better world for each and everyone where we cannot afford to leave anyone behind. Having said this and having a look at the, at the timetable and also taking into account that it's uh, evening for uh, many of you and afternoon for uh, also many of you, I would like to bring this webinar to a close. I would like to thank you very much. I would like to invite uh, all of you continue to speak up and speak out because um, only by speaking up and speaking out your points of concern can be considered and will be carried on to the highest level um, uh, at the global level. And that is what we need to uh, hear more. Country voices reflected at the global level so that global potential solutions are taking into account what is really happening and really needed at the country level. May I think, thank all of you for being here, for contributing, and please stay in touch. It's the first time but we, that we are addressing this, but certainly not the last time. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you all.